Once upon a time in Baldevpur village, there lived a carpenter named Raju. His wife died after delivering a baby boy. Raju's mother was now finding it difficult to raise the baby. After some time, Sonu, for heaven's sake, please don't cry. I have no energy left to attend you any more. It is just getting more difficult for me. Look at your father. He doesn't even realize anything. I'm struggling so hard to manage both father and son. Mother, it is just a short while since he had milk. I am surprised why he is crying again. I don't know how to make him stop crying. I'm facing a lot of trouble. Why don't you accept any proposal to get married again? I cannot handle the baby any more. I shall leave this to you to take a decision and relieve me eventually. I have no problem, mother. But can we be sure that the girl will take proper care of that baby? If she has her baby in the future, she will definitely neglect this child. Please understand the reason behind my reluctance to get married. I know your concern, and that is why I have been trying to bring your uncle's daughter as your wife. They are from the modest financial background, and her father has been finding it difficult to get her married. I'm sure she'll show enough empathy, as she has faced so much hardship since her childhood. Trust me, she'll take good care of your child. Are you referring to Meena? I know she is a good-natured girl, but will she be ready to marry a widower? If she is willing to consider this, then I am ready to marry her too. What do you say? Tell me. If you have no objection, then you shall leave the rest to me. I am here to fix this. Eventually, Meena and Raju got married. Meena looked after the child with immense love and great dedication. Time moved on. Sonu has now turned ten years. He has been taking interest in carpentry and is learning basic skills from his father. Dear, there's a good news for you. I'm going to be a mother of your child. I am pregnant. <laughs> This is feast to my ears. I am very happy. Have you informed my mother? Meena delivers a baby girl. As time moves on, there's a perceptible change in Meena. Of late, she began to feel Sonu was a big burden to her. Mother, I am hungry. Why don't you serve me some food? I have asked you twice, but you didn't respond to me. Oh, come on. Behave as per your age. Why can't you serve yourself? I can't spoon feed you every time. You are a young boy now. Why can't you help yourself now? Why do you need me every time? I am sorry, mother, but why are you harsh to me today? You have never been like this before. There's no drinking water at home. Once you are done with your meal, don't loiter around aimlessly. Go to the well and collect water. Get it in two pots. I have never collected water from the well till date, mother. Why don't you get it yourself? Two pots are too heavy for me. It is not possible for me to do this. Hmm. Why won't you do this? I can't spare this any more. Stage these dramas in front of your father or your granny. Do as I say. You have no choice here, or else I'll have to punish you. As Meena turns harsher, Sonu is now left with no choice but to fetch water from the well. While returning from the well with water, random thoughts sprout in his mind. Suddenly, my mother has started treating me badly. She had never troubled me in this manner earlier. I wonder why she is doing this to me regularly. Ouch! This is too heavy for me. So difficult. I wonder if I can carry this load home easily. Meena continues to torment Sonu. Of course. When Raju is around, she pretends to be her usual loving and caring mother. Father, I am being harassed by my mother quite often. She forces me to carry out many arduous tasks. My boy, please don't say this about kind-hearted Meena. Why will she suddenly do this? She loves you a lot and is only preparing you to become more efficient and serious in life. Sonu's repeated grievances fall to deaf ears as Raju doesn't bother to believe. One day, frustrated Sonu decides he has had it enough. He runs away from house. Oh Lord, I have never bothered to listen to my child. He has now left me. He is an innocent child, and I am worried about his whereabouts. I have been frantically searching every corner of the village. I blame this on you. No wonder all my fears about the second marriage have come true. Raju walks out far away. Sonu has been spotted. I have travelled very long, and I am beginning to feel hungry. I am tired too. I wish there were some angel who could give me food. Oh. 
I can spot a person standing there. I think I should seek some food from them. Sonu inches towards him. Sir, you look like a venerated teacher who has shaped my career. Please listen to me. I am very hungry. Give me something to eat or else I will collapse. Don't treat me as a beggar. I am ready to help you in return, sir. Oh boy, you seem to be too mature for your age. Don't worry. I will surely give you food. But please tell me, where are you coming from and why are you here? I am the son of carpenter Raju. Now please serve me food for God's sake. I assure you I will narrate my story later. Saraswati, this boy is hungry. Why don't you give him something to eat? Give him food. He is very hungry. After the meal, Sonu narrates to the guru his tale of sorrows and why he had to run away from his house. So, you have left your home and are now wondering without any idea where this lead to. Don't you realize this will bring more trauma to your father? I think I should inform him about your whereabouts. Then he will come and take you back to your home. For God's sake, please don't do this to me, sir. Honestly, I have no problem going back to my father. But let me stand for myself. I should shape my life and begin to earn money. My stepmother should learn about my accomplishments and feel be overwhelmed. I need your guidance and support in this matter. As I have told you already, I won't accept anything as charity. I shall offer my services. Okay. I will permit you to stay with us in that case. I have no objection, but you shall carry out my orders strictly. The day you fail to carry my instructions rightly, I will drive you outside this place. If you are willing to abide by this condition, you are welcome to stay here. If not, you are free to move on. Sir, I shall obey your instructions without any fail. I request you not to have any doubts at all. If I fail to your instructions, I will go by myself. Sonu started living there ever since. Hey Sonu, where are you? Please come to me. I just had breakfast served by the madam. It was delicious. Now please instruct me, sir. Okay. Right away go to the cattle shed. You have to clean the cattle shed duly twice in the morning and in the evening. Later you have to collect milk and hand it over to your madam. This shall be your daily duty. Fine master, I am honored now. Excited Sonu leaves for the cattle shed. He finishes the cleaning job and then collects the milk and hands it over to Guru's wife. You are a young child, but your work speaks for itself. If only you had helped your parents with such a skill and sincerity, they would have been proud of you. No, madam, I have a lot of to learn and I have to earn well before I return home proudly. Until then, trust me, I shall not rest or relax. There were times when the number of students who trained at the ashram was quite high. Your master has now retired from these responsibilities and has been living here peacefully. Now that you are here with us, we have to wait and see where this will lead us to. Every day, Sonu would clean the kettle shade, collect milk and hand it over to the housewife. Time moves on. One day, Sonu, you seem to be in love with the cattle shed. You look excited. Yes, sir. You can delegate me any work. I will accomplish it happily. I request you not to cast any doubts in your mind. Please let me know if anything else is waiting for me. Pick that X. I don't know how you will accomplish this task, but by the end of the day, you have to get me two gold coins by just using this X. How on earth I am going to use this X and earn two coins by evening, sir? Tell me, Guruji. That is not my concern. You remember the condition on well. If you fail to do what you have been asked for, you are left with no other choice but to beg to your parents. Oh, sir, don't say this. I beg you. I shall work my best to earn two coins by the end of the day using this X. Good luck. And let us see if you will win the test or leave the ashram. Sonu collects the X from his guru and embarks on this new mission. I have been instructing to use this X and earn two coins. How shall I do now? Oh, I will X the firewood, sell it in the market and fetch those two gold coins for my master. Sonu enters the forest and he hunts for a right tree. And after spotting a tree with dried branch, he begins to cut those branches with power after a while. Goodness, how hard I try. This tree is too strong to fall. The evening is not very far and I am staring at a substantial target. A gritty Sonu finally collects the wood and is now getting ready to sell it. Boy, how much does this heap of wood cost? Two coins, sir. I can give you one coin for this heap and not a penny more. Thank you, sir. 
I suggest you should walk into the forest and collect this heap from the source. Then I have no problem if you give me just one coin in return. Nonsense! Do I look like a fool to come to the forest and pick this firewood? You are already standing outside my house. You seem to be mad. I have carried the heap worth two coins all the way deep inside the forest and have brought it to your doorstep. And you want to buy it for just one coin? I had to be harsh to you to let you know how tough this was for me. You are impossible. A tough guy. Please take these two coins and drop the heap inside the house. Sonu has at last won the challenge. He returns to his master to deliver two gold coins. Good. Until further instructions, you have to continue this practice and get me two gold coins daily. Sonu now has to work in the cattle shed and also earn two gold coins, which he has to compulsorily hand over to his master. After a few days, the guru summons Sonu. Your next task will be this bamboo stick. You have to sell this for ten gold coins. You have two days to finish this task. Understand? Are you serious about this, sir? You are sure you want me to sell this bamboo stick for ten coins? Yes, you heard it right, Sonu. Now you have to get going. Don't forget the condition. No, sir. I very well remember my words. I must bid goodbye to you and this ashram if I fail to close this task. Sonu approaches Guru's wife and narrates the entire story. Madam, this is unfair. The master looks determined to send me away. Is there anyone who will buy this bamboo stick for ten gold coins? Please tell me. Son, I'm sure your guru has a hidden message in his latest challenge. I advise you to apply your intelligence and decode this valuable message perfectly. Sonu walks out with the bamboo stick and is thinking deeply about its sale. One heap of firewood was just able to fetch me two gold coins. I wonder if there is any fool on this earth who is willing to buy this ordinary bamboo stick for hefty ten coins. He wanders all day, holding the stick helplessly and thinking restlessly. By the end of the day, he is tired and feeling hopeless. An entire day is a good waste. I have failed in my mission. What shall I do now? It is supper time as Sonu is still lost in deep thoughts. Sonu, what happened? I still see the bamboo stick hanging on the wall and your unhappy face. You are left with one more day. Tell me, how are you planning to sell the bamboo stick and make money? If not, then I fear the time has come for you to leave us. I am clueless, mother. I did my best throughout the day, and I couldn't succeed. As he gets ready to retire to bed, a brilliant thought suddenly strikes his mind. I got it. I have caught the thread that can help me to crack this challenge. I will deploy the skills that my father had taught me and turn this stick into a wonderful flute. No one will pay to buy a bamboo stick, but when the stick is a flute will full of music, ten coins will be undervaluing its magic. Sonu doesn't waste a moment. In that very night, he sits to carve the stick into a flute. The ensuing day, he sells the new flute in the market for ten coins and delivers the money to his master. Hats off, Sonu. You have made the most of your intelligence. Now take this log with you. You have to sell it for twenty-five coins. Remember, you have three days to win this challenge. If you fail, then remember your promise. As you say, sir. Sonu took that wooden bundle. He made flutes and other instruments and other things out of it. He took it to the market and sold it. Gradually he became very proficient. His guru also was very happy with him. Well done son. If you keep working hard like this, you will become successful very soon. Slowly you are learning things now. Your parents will be proud of you too. I am damn sure about this. As days pass, Sonu becomes a proficient toy maker dealing with beautifully carved wooden toys. One day his master passes another piece of log as his daily quota. Please collect this log and sell it in the market for. I very well know the job, sir. I shall collect this log, carry it to the market, then sell it for the twenty-five coins. Finally, hand over the money to you. What is new in this? Yes, you are right. But there is a change in the plan. You have to sell this log for hundred coins on this occasion. I will give you four days to achieve this target. If you fail in this, of course, there is no need to remind you at all. What? Hundred coins out of this log? Who on the earth will buy toys for hundred coins, sir? However, I shall try to accomplish this. Sonu now has to work on a new idea that can fetch him not two, not twenty-five, but hundred coins. 
Sonu, you seem to be in deep thoughts again. What bothers you now? Look at this log, madam. The master now wants me to sell this for hundred coins. I have four days to finish this task. I feel I am stuck again and staring at defeat. Look, when you were able to sell the log for twenty-five coins, I'm sure you can sell the same piece for hundred coins too. Keep trying, and you shall be rewarded. You are right, mother. As I think, I feel that there is a sure merit and a message in Guruji's actions and intentions. Saying this, Sonu sets off as he applies his brain harder. As he turns more restless, a strong wind brings a paper with a picture of a beautiful young woman and drops it close to him. Sonu picks it up with curiosity. I can't believe how beautiful this woman is. I am portrait belongs to a princess of a great kingdom. I will try to make this sketch now. He begins to carve the figure in of that pretty woman. As he is in the midway, a prince arrives on his horse. He spots Sonu who is now gazing at the portrait in concentration. The prince softly approaches him. Who are you young boy? I have been searching for this portrait. The lady in the portrait happens to my fiance and princess. A sudden gale has blown this away from me. I am happy to see this again. My name is Satya. I am a carpenter and a toy maker. This portrait has mesmerized me. I am sure you will be more excited to see this transform into a beautiful figurine. Can you really make a figurine out of this portrait? That is my job, sir. If you can wait for 2 hours, the work will be completed. Just wait. Sonu finishes the job and hands over the figurine to the prince. Splendid. You have done an incredible work. Your art is invaluable. I am happy to present you 1000 gold coins as a token of appreciation. Please accept it. Sonu has carved a beautiful figure filled with life and has earned 1000 coins. He now hands over the money to his master. Satya, I am proud of you. I am adding another 1000 coins to this amount. Take this money and please meet your parents. They will be proud of your achievements. They will be very happy by seeing this achievement. Dear sir, I am content with thousand coins. I am privileged to gift the other thousand coins as your guru dakshina. I am in debt to you for the rest of my life. You made me what I am today. Please bless me. My efforts are smaller than your commitment. In fact, you should be thankful to your father who had identified and improved the inherent skill in you. He had helped you master it. You shouldn't have left him at all. Please visit them immediately. Sonu bids goodbye to his master and unites with his parents. They are happy to take the note of their son's art and achievements. Please forgive me son. I was rude to you for no reason. Your absence shook my conscience and made me feel shameful. I promise I'll never treat you badly again. Oh, don't say this to me mother. I am embarrassed. From that day, the family has embarked on their new venture. Where they made beautiful toys and sold them. Just leave the show after watching my success. Subscribe and like the story if it has impressed you. For more wonderful stories, please visit our new stories book page.